so logging on. It is quick and easy. It's actually, I would argue, easier than um, through talk for many reasons because one, it works on Safari and two, there's about only two login screens versus four. So that also makes it pretty easy. Um, so we're going to put the link and that's, and you're gonna click get started. If you already have an action ID, um, the action ID is for anybody that has used a VPB before. If all you've used is through talk, this is going to, this is going to apply to you. If you already have an action ID account, uh, you're going to put in that email address and password. Um, like I said, you need to select create an action ID account, and then you need to fill out the required fields, which is your email address, and then you create a password. Um, if necessary, you can reset your password by just selecting forgot password on this login page. So this is what you're going to see. If you've already done a VPB, you're going to click login. If you've just, if this is your first time using VPB Connect or a VPB in general, click that create an action ID account. And this is what the screen's going to show up as. If you're, if prompted, enter the zip code so you can make calls to people in your community. If you're using your computer, a pop-up will appear asking you to enable your microphone. It will look like this. You want to make sure you hit allow because the voters you call are going to be able to hear your voice. That's another thing that's different than through talk. We do not get to use our phones. We're using our computer. And you guys might be asking, well, what if you're talking on the Zoom? I'm going to be able to hear you while I'm talking to voters. Actually, we just learned a special new trick for this. So just hang tight and I'm going to show you how to disconnect your audio. But um, that's in a couple more slides. So making calls is also intuitive and it's really easy to get started, especially because you all are pros on through talk. Once you enter VPB connect, you're going to notice the first voters name. The yeah, and the phone number is going to be near the top of the page right here. Instead of being on the left, like on through talk, it's going to be right under the voters name. Um, along the left column, you're going to see any additional information provided about the voter, their cell phone, party affiliation, precinct, voting city, and preferred phone number. Hit the call button when you're ready to begin calling the voter. You will hear a ring and wait for the voter to answer. Um, if there are multiple voters we need to reach in the same household, you're going to ask for each person and record your answer from your conversation with each voter by clicking on their name in the top right corner. So like you can see here on this screen, we have Israel Dine, and then it also says also in household is Josephine Hansen. So recording data, our campaign is data driven, so we need accurate data and we need a lot of it. This is one of the most important steps when you're phone banking. Recording accurate data allows the campaign to keep track of how voters respond to the questions provided in the script. VPB Connect allows data to be recorded whether or not voters answer your call. So you're going to begin the script and complete all of the listed questions by marking the results as appropriate as with ThruTalk. But instead of slides with um, VPB Connect, they are drop down menus. So it'll always say choose an option and then you'll just click the best response. Based on what you select, the next part of the script is gonna appear on your screen. Continue talking to the voter and selecting their responses until you see script complete right here. And like, um, as I already said, the script is going to change based on what you answer. So if you're, if they're supporting Joe, you'll, you know, continue with the script. If they're supporting Trump, you're going to immediately end the conversation as you do if you were using through talk, because we really do not need to be engaging with them. If you're unable to reach the voter, just select the I couldn't reach Israel or whatever their name is at the top of the virtual phone bank in red. A drop down list is going to appear 
and then it will list the possible options of why that voter could not be contacted. If they're not home, you click not home. If they refuse to talk to you, it's refused. If they've um, died, you're gonna click deceased. If they no longer live there, it's moved. Um, we're not using callback. We're not using busy. We're not leaving messages. They might tell you that you have a wrong number or the number might be disconnected. Um, so this is just, it's blown up a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. These are the um, responses if you couldn't reach the voter. Not home is the most common response you're gonna use when you're phone banking. This indicates that the call either went to voicemail or the person your aunt who you called was not the person you're trying to reach. Refused should be used carefully. It's also known as the opt out. It removes the voter from our contact list permanently. Only select this option if voters specifically request to be removed from the call list. It's also very important to verify you're speaking with the correct person before completing a refuse request. In other words, relatives or friends of the voter cannot request that they be removed. If Israel says, remove me from your list, go ahead and remove him. But if his sister or if his wife or if his cousin says, remove him, you can't. You just mark that as not home. You do not remove someone unless they specifically ask you to, the voter. Now deceased, this response indicates, of course, that the voter has passed away. Um, moved, the response indicates that the voter is no longer at the address associated with the provided phone number. This happens a lot with younger voters who are living with their parents when they on their first election and sometimes they move to an apartment uh, for the second time around or third. Um, so that's when you would use moved. Call back, it indicates the voter has asked to be called back at a different time. We're not you gonna use call back, we're just gonna go ahead and use not home because we will call them back again anyways. Um, busy. This is this response indicates that you've received a busy signal when dialing a voter. Again, ignore busy. We're going to use disconnected. Left message. We're not leaving messages, but if we were, you would be using a um, voicemail. Wrong number. The phone number provided does not reach the correct voter, and they tell you you have the wrong number. And disconnected indicates the phone number provided produces a disconnected service message. So continuing with calls and finishing, you will make calls for a period of time and talk to a lot of voters and then wrap up. So after you enter the call results um, of your call, select save and next call at the top of the screen to move on to the next voter. When you're done for the day, just select stop making calls at the bottom of. I have a, a, a question. If yeah, somebody hangs up on you, do you put in not home? Um, if so, if someone hangs up on you after you say you're with the campaign, mark that as refused because um, refused. Okay. Yeah, they don't want to talk to us or anybody res resulting with Colorado Democrats. That would count as a refused. Um, not home would you know be like I'm driving right now. I can't talk right now. I'm eating dinner, sort of thing. Okay, got yeah. it. Thank you. No problem. So now we're going to review our um, Congressional District 3 script, and this is associated with Diane Mitch Bush. For those of you in El Paso County, um, the person on your ballot should have been um, Jillian Freeland. So we're just in a different region right now, so don't worry about it. This is for Diane Mitch Bush. Um, so you're going to ask them whether or not they've supported Diane. And you know, there's different scripts based on how they respond. Um, and then you can also ask them to be voting for Joe. And also John Hickenlooper, and again, the responses are, the script is gonna change based on the response button that you click. And then you wanna make sure you have a voting plan with them. If they haven't already voted, ask them how they're voting, it's gonna be, Oh, this vote by mail does not exist anymore. The deadline was October 26th. So the only way people can vote now is by Dropbox or in person. 
Some people will ask when are drop boxes open 24 seven. They are, they don't close. And usually the, um, the ballot boxes are emptied at least once a day. Um, another thing people might ask is, um, when's the latest I can return my ballot on a drop box. You can return it on by October. I mean, November 3rd, sorry, election day, which is November 3rd at 6 59 and 59 seconds. They will literally stand there. And if you're a second later, they won't take it. So you really want to encourage the voter to drop it off in a drop box as soon as they possibly can. Um, and then you're going to want to work out a date with them. So we have detailed plans to vote with them. We want to make sure, you know, okay, you're going to drop off your ballot. Uh, do you want to drop it off this weekend or, um, you know, tomorrow or Monday, right? But there, are, I mean, there are only five days left till the election's over. So you just pick the closest date to today that you can find with the voter as possible. And then all the dates are here. Most of these are gone. There's um, still the 30th, November 2nd, November 1st, and election day. Um, oh yeah, and of course this weekend, which would be 30th and 31st. Um, and then this is our hard ask. Again, it's called that because we're, um, we're not being rude, we're just being direct. And there are, like I said, only five days left till this election ends, but p things are just getting more crazy, not less crazy. So we always need volunteers. This is what you're gonna ask them. Can I count on you to volunteer with us by making phone calls from home? There's yes, maybe, or no. Ignore the later September. And we're already in GOTV. So I would honestly just use yes, maybe, or no. Um, and then you're gonna wanna ask them to vote triple. That's what we're calling this. When we're asking a voter to remind three friends to vote, that is referred to as vote tripling. If they say the names of three friends, you can put it in this box. Um, sometimes what I do is just, um, they'll say, oh, I've told all my friends, I type that in there. Or they say, um, well, yes, I'll remind them. I just put, will remind three friends because they don't always um, share those names with you, but that's okay. So this is the part where everybody needs to make sure that we're pay they're paying attention. This is different than what you're able to do with Talk. how you can disable Zoom audio for an open VPB. So what you're gonna do is go to the bottom left hand of the screen and select leave computer audio. Where your mute button is, there's a little carrot that points up. That's what you're gonna use and click on leave computer audio. raise hand function on Zoom. There is a two-step process to raise your hand. Example of that is going to look like this. Um, you're gonna click on the participants tab in the lower tool toolbar. It's gonna be next to your stop video. From this tab, click on the raise hand button on the bottom right, and then your hand should be raised. You'll see like a little blue hand next to your name. Um, and then from there, check the chat and we will reach out to you. Another way you can do it without raising your hand, just type a question in the chat. Um, because there are usually a lot of us on these calls, we will tr we'll answer your question as quickly as possible. So feel free to just use the chat freely and frequently if you'd like um, for any questions you have. So some tips for using VPB Connect. You want to confirm you're using the correct browser for VPB Connect. Remember to always keep a positive attitude. Voters can hear your positivity through the phone. Um, confirm you've reached the correct voter when you first speak to them. Don't be afraid to tell a voter, I don't know, in response to their question. So like if they ask you some bizarre question about, I don't know, absentee ballots, you're going to be like, to be honest with you, 
I don't know, but I can, you know, point you to a resource that might help you. And um, what I can do, or Jake or Gabby can also do, there are like three good websites that you should definitely write down or have with you as you're talking to voters. The first one is IWillVote.com. It's really great for those people who waited till literally last minute to register. They can do it there. Um, also, they can go to the Secretary of State's website to find the nearest Dropbox location. Another thing you're going to want to make sure you have on hand to be available to tell people, ballot boxes are always open and they are emptied daily. Um, and the other thing is it's too late to mail your ballot. So those are like four really important things you need to make sure that you have on hand to tell these voters. Um, also mark the results of every conversation before moving on to your next call as always and use key components of the script but have a real conversation. If you feel like um, you're gonna sound like a robot following the script exactly, to be honest, I've never done that. Most volunteers just um, include the key parts and just make it their own because you wanna sound real because we're real volunteers, right? Um, so just, yeah, make it personal. Make sure you connect with the voter. You guys will have really good conversations. So now we've reached Q&A. If you have any questions, you can type them in the 